Welcome, everybody, to the first day of autumn. The most amazing season that has ever existed and ever will. Better than all three other seasons by a great order of magnitude. So I urge you all to go out there, grab your flannel blankets, grab a pecan, what is this, Pe pecan, caramel pecan, caramel pecan candle, perhaps pumpkin spice, and just sit in your house and just stare out the window at the cold rain that falls as the leaves dance. Haha, <laughs> so let's start this season off right, ladies and gentlemen, by making a video about hockey. Not just any video about hockey, Barry. A video about people that can use hockey. A video about people that knew about hockey, but did not tell the Straw Hats about hockey. Why? Because they're jerks, Barry. They're all just a bunch of jerks. Just like, um, uh, oh, Crocus. Crocus is the biggest jerk in the One Piece story, right? He knew about hockey. Of course he did. He could probably use it himself. He was a member of Goldie Rogers' crew, the king of the pirates for God's sake. He went to the New World. He went to Laugh Tale. Of course Crocus knew about hockey, and yet he did not tell a single straw hat about it, even though he understood that they were woefully unprepared for the Grand Line. They didn't even know what a log pose was, okay? And Crocus, he should have been like, hey, I like you kids, okay? You helped out Laboon. You chased off those people that were trying to kill him. Okay, for that reason, are you guys actually ready for the Grand Line? And Luffy's like, Kaiza Kuoni, Ori Winar. And he's like, yeah, sure you are, kid, sure you are. Um, do you kids know what a log pose is? And I'm like, nope. And he's like, oh, God. Okay, well, here's this. Um, okay, now, next question. Do you know what hockey is? And everyone's like, no. Luffy's like, is it a type of food? He's like, no, it's not. Well, I think it might be a variety of mayonnaise. I'm not sure. Anyway, yeah, hockey. Very important skill that you should learn. It allows you to sense, like, uh, living things around you and detect attacks coming and allows you to physically harm you if you you're a devil fruit user. By the way, Luffy, you're a gumu gumu no user, right? And Luffy's like, yeah, I'm made of rubber. He's like, okay, Crocus should have armament hockeyed up his fist and boom, punch Luffy right in the face right there. And he gets up and he's like, whoa, that hurt. How'd you do that? I'm made of rubber. And he's like, it's called hockey, kid. All right, sit down. I got to teach you kids some stuff here, okay? I don't want you to die out there. It's pretty dangerous, okay? And he didn't do that. And the reason he didn't do that, no other explanation. He's just a jerk, okay? So now, obviously, at this point, a lot of people are saying, well, teching the reason why that Crocus did not explain hockey to the Straw Hats, and the reason a lot of characters that should have been able to use hockey did not use it in earlier parts of the story, is of course because Oda probably just didn't, you know, flesh out hockey as much at that point. He didn't really think that far ahead. Now, there are examples, like early on in Chapter 1, for instance, when Shanks gives the Lord of the Coast the Death Stare, and it, like, just bows to its knees, which is pretty impressive, considering that Sea Kings do not have knees. But, you know, Shanks give this death glare to the Sea Serpent, and it just backed down, all right? Now, you could argue that that was like, oh, Oda knew everything that he was going to do with hockey, you know, observation, armament, and conquerors, and he's like, Shanks is going to have conquerors, right? But another way of looking at it is just maybe Oda had some sort of vague concept. Like, he's like, I might do something with, like, an ability like that, like with Key or, like, some Sixth Sense kind of situation. But he didn't really know exactly what he was going to do with it yet. So he's like, yeah, this might be something just specific for Shanks, or it might be a broader ability that everybody can learn. Uh, we'll see where it goes, right? That's the way at least I look at it in early One Piece. Um, I was just re-watching the Little Garden arc not long ago, and there was the scene at the end of that arc when Luffy was fighting Mr. Three Galdino, and he creates a bunch of those statues out of wax, and he's like, ah, there's about a hundred of me. Which one are you going to attack, Luffy? Choose wisely. And Luffy just one-shots Mr. Three. Like, he finds the real one, like, almost instantly. And Mr. Three's like, how did you know it was me? And Luffy's just like, I don't know, just a hunch, just instinct. You know, so you can imply like, oh, observation hockey a little bit there? I don't really know if that was Oda's intention or what. Um, but it's very clear that, you know, he didn't like expand on hockey in the earlier parts of the story. Uh, we didn't really see Luffy even exhibiting conquerors until after Thriller Bark, you know, when he fought against Duval's like giant uh, pig, you know, Motoboro. You know, that was the first animal that was like terrified of Luffy in like the conquerors hockey aspect, okay? So, situation there. I also made a short video about this a couple weeks ago talking about Crocodile. See, that's the point of the shorts. They are, in fact, prequels for actual videos. There they are. But no, I was talking about how Crocodile did not use hockey during his first fight with Luffy, okay? And I'll expand on that a little bit more here because um, he is on this list, okay? Because Crocodile is, you know, one of the warlords and he's super powerful. Like, you know, he clearly would have known observation and armament hockey. It doesn't make any sense for him not to know 
that when he fought against Luffy at Alabasta, how come he didn't use it on them? Um, you know, and it's like, did he just learn it in the last two years? Because that doesn't make really a lot of sense, right? So we'll get to that. We'll get to that. So, yes, I understand Oda didn't flesh it out as much. It's kind of the same situation like with Hunter x Hunter. Like, I'm pretty damn sure Tagashi did not plan on Nen being part of that story in the first arc, okay? Not until, like, the Heavens Arena arc when he really introduces Nen into his manga. It might be something here where Oda had, like, a rough idea for it, but it wasn't until the story really gained traction that he's like, okay, I'm gonna do this now, okay? So, let's talk about these characters, and outside of the reason of Oda just didn't have it, you know, thought up yet, what are some other reasons why these characters might not have explained hockey to Luffy, okay? So, first and foremost, um, Garp, like... Yeah. Now, here's something interesting with Garp. Not just him, but also every Marine. Okay. Every single... I don't want to say every single Marine. Like, even, like, the, the chore boys or, like, the seamen recruits or whatever. But at least, at the bare minimum, every single Marine officer should know what hockey is. Because this is a military institution that is charged with defending the public in the world... And they're trained at, you know, the different marine bases and marine HQ and everything to protect the citizenry of One Piece from pirates, some of which have magical devil fruit powers. And hockey is one of the, like, the few ways to actually combat them, especially Logias. Every single marine officer from Ensign all the way up to Fleet Admiral should have a class about what hockey is, what the three different types are, and how to train and use it. Every single officer, okay? Even even some of the, like, the infantry units should really know about it. Like, I'm not saying, like, as soon as you join the Marines, like Kobe, you know, he joins the Marines and, like, one of the, okay, well, hell, Meppo, it looks like our first class is Hockey 101, you know? I'm not saying that, but, you know, once you start rising through the ranks, especially if you rise through the ranks fast, like Kobe and Helmeppo, they were, you know, they were personally trained by Garp, but they were, like, you know, chief petty officer in, like, only a couple of months or whatever. So if you join the Marines and you start really, like, you're really talented, Talented, yeah, somebody should sit you down like a senior officer should sit you down and be like, okay, you're really talented. Do you know what hockey is? Like, no. He's like, okay, you need to learn what this is, all right? So, for that reason, not just Garp, who was a vice admiral, and of course he used hockey, he fought in one of the most bloody battles involving hockey at God Valley, um, he should have probably told Luffy about it when he was a kid. Now, the situation there is Garp wanted Luffy to become a marine, not a pirate, but he was still training Luffy for that purpose, right? He was, like, throwing Luffy into the jungle and tying him into a balloon and be like, have fun there, grandson, you know, all that stuff. So he was still training him, and it's, like, implied that if, like, Luffy wanted to be a Marine, and if he stayed with Garp, and Garp's like, that's my grandson, he's gonna be such a strong Marine, eventually Garp would have just personally taught Luffy hockey and Rokushiki and, like, everything he needed in order to become a proper Marine. But, because Luffy was so rebellious, and he's like, I don't want to be a Marine, I want to be a pirate like Shanks, Garp's like, son of a... And so... You know, he really, you know, didn't have time to personally train him, so he gave him to Dadan. And so, you could sort of understand that, because Luffy was, like, a little, little kid. But still, like, you'd think that Garp would have taught him about at least a little bit, or, like, mentioned it. Because he did go to visit them every once in a while when he was on leave. Uh, Garp never brought it up. And Luffy was always perplexed by that. Just, like, you know, whenever Garp would, like, pinch his cheek, and they're like, How do you hurt me? I'm made of rubber! And, like, Garp never explained to him why he could do that, or what ability he could use, or whatever, like... Like that uh, it's also up to Luffy he never really questioned it you know he never really asked himself like the deep philosophical question of like how come he can hurt me even though I'm made of rubber it might be some kind of super secret special ability that only really strong people know how to use I should look into this I should read books I mean that's not Luffy okay so you know whatever but you know Garp is one example here's another one you might not realize going off of the whole marine thing uh Morgan that's right, Captain Morgan, like one of the first major enemies that Luffy and Zoro face in the story, he was a marine captain. You mean to tell me in this story, you can rise to the rank of marine captain without being told by the marines themselves, hockey exists. Now, 
I can understand why Morgan would not be able to use hockey because he was kind of a blowhard. He was kind of an idiot, right? He was just like, oh, build a statue of me. And then after you build a statue of me, build a bigger statue of me, right? So yeah, that's the kind of guy Morgan was. And he's just like, I have an ax for a hand. I don't, who needs armament hockey or conquerors when you have an ax for a hand, right? So he's that kind of character, but he should have still like known about it. Like, you know, been aware of it. Now, this doesn't really mean anything to like Luffy and Zoro. Like, I'm not saying Morgan should have sat Luffy and Zoro down. Like, all right, all right, let me explain. I'm just saying it's kind of funny thinking of Morgan as such of like a weak character that was like first introduced in the first arcs of the story, knowing about hockey. But if you think about it logically, he, he should have. Now, he probably didn't give a crap about it. He was like, you know, uh, you know, he was like, okay, you're a Marine captain now. You really should start training in hockey. And he's like, who needs that? I don't care. I don't need any stupid magic Nen chakra bullshit. And he walks out of the door. But it's just funny to think that he would know about it because he probably did, okay? All right, moving on after that, though, we have Orange Town, Buggy. Buggy knows about hockey. He knew about hockey, okay? Buggy was on Roger's crew alongside Shanks. Buggy was about 100 yards away when Roger and Whitebeard had this epic world-ending clash moment. Buggy was, like, right there on the sidelines, like, oh, God, we're all gonna die! But he was there. He witnessed this, all right? There's no way you can witness this and be like, hmm... They must just be really, really buff. That's the reason they can rend the sky asunder and lightning bolts are firing out of their weapons, yeah. It's not like Nen. Like, it's not like, you know, you have to know hockey in order to see hockey. No, anybody can see hockey. The, the lightning bolts and shockwaves coming off of Whitebeard's Bicento and Roger's Sword Ace, like, everybody can see that from, like, a five-mile radius. You can feel the shockwaves. You can taste it. That's how palpable it is, right? So Buggy definitely knew about about it. Of course he did. And it's just the thing with Buggy is you get the impression that like he was afraid of going back to the Grand Line. He was afraid of doing all this crazy stuff again. So he wanted to be, you know, safe and like complacent. And so he just set up shop in the East Blue so he could be like, well, the East Blue is like the most peaceful of the oceans and I don't have to deal with monsters like Roger and Whitebeard or whatever. I'm just going to stay in this little area of the East and I'll, you know, have my little clown pirate crew and we'll terrorize some small villages and I have my Buggy balls and we'll have parties every night we'll drink some good booze and whatever we don't need to get involved with the new world we don't need to get involved with the yonko or the warlords or anybody like that that's what buggy was and at the end of the day hockey is ambition like that's the literal definition ambition and buggy really didn't have much of an ambition i mean he had the ambition in the sense of like he wanted to become a great pirate like shanks you know he sort of wanted to measure up to shanks and roger and he wanted treasure but he was never able to follow through with that he didn't have the willpower to really push himself into the Grand Line. Ironically enough, it wasn't until Luffy showed up, and that's when he was like, screw this, we're going to the Grand Line, we're getting them back, right? And so right now, he's, well, he's a former warlord. I'm not really sure if he could, like, awaken hockey. I, I don't really know if Buggy has it in him. Um, but he definitely should know about it, right? Like, it would have been really cool if we saw a scene at Logtown when he was planning on killing Luffy, you know, decapitating him or whatever. It would have been really cool if there was a scene where, you know, he was talking to Kabaji or Mo or Alvita or somebody and he's like we need to figure out a way to eliminate Straw Hat Luffy and he's like yeah but his, his body's made of rubber you know we can't physically hurt him and he's like ah oh, damn it if only I knew hockey like Captain Roger what was that buggy ah oh, nothing whatever let's just use a sword <laughs> let's just cut his head off he's probably not gonna be able to bounce back from that right so uh, it would have been interesting but yeah buggy definitely knew what hockey was he probably just maybe repressed a lot of these traumatic memories of like witnessing giant battles with Roger and huge sea monsters and Odin he's just like oh that was terrifying I never want to go back to that, right? But Buggy definitely knew. Um, then we get to the Baratier, uh, Zeph. I don't think Claw Hador or Kuro or Django or anybody would have known about hockey or, like, anybody in, like, you know, Usopp's village or anything, but Zeph, who was the former captain of the Cook Pirates that had journeyed up and down the Grand Line for about a year, um, it stands to reason he probably would have seen some hockey users at some point, like, he would have known about it. Here's something else to keep in mind at this point. 
just because you're able to use hockey doesn't necessarily you know how to like you know awaken it like some people are just naturally gifted some people just might have like a better sense of awareness like not observation to the point where they can detect where life forms are or anything but they're just more finely tuned to the world around them and that's it and they don't even know it's observation they don't know it's some type of superpower they just think they're like really finely tuned to things you know like they can hear really well or they can see things from far away they might be using observation without even knowing it okay and it's also for that reason i want to say just because somebody might know observation or armament does not mean that they're like impervious in battle okay so let's say for example that zeph uh you know he had his crew the cook pirates and they all they go up against another pirate crew all right now let's say the captain of this particular pirate crew you know the bakery pirates it's we're the cook pirates we're the baker pirates okay whatever let's say the captain of the bakery pirates knew a little bit of armament but not enough to actually, like, he, he had a hard time controlling it, like, it wasn't perfect, like, he can only use it once in a while, he didn't train with it, he didn't even really know what it was as a concept, he's just like, sometimes I punch things and, you know, I'm able to damage things, and before, like, he's even able to fight against Zeph, Zeph takes out his foot and just, BAM, kicks him in the side of the head and kills him in one shot, right? And then that's it. That's the end of the bakery pirates and like Zeph sails away with their booty or whatever, right? It's just like, just because you know a little bit of armament or observation doesn't mean like you're invincible. Okay, it's it, in, in that sense, it's very different from Nen from Hunter Hunter because in Hunter Hunter, it's like if you know Nen and you have it and you punch somebody that doesn't have Nen, that could like straight up kill them or seriously wound them in like one punch, right? It's not like that in One Piece, but you know, Zeph would have probably known a little bit about hockey and and actually, the reason he did not tell Luffy about this, I can sort of understand why. Because remember, Zeph offered his logbook to Luffy. He's like, hey, I have this logbook about my journey for one year in the Grand Line. If you want it, I'll give it to you. And Luffy's like, no, I don't want that. Thank you. Um, you know, I want to have my own adventure. I want to learn about it on my way and stuff. And uh, Zeph is kind of like, all right, I understand. And he just he takes away the logbook. So, you know, maybe Zeph thought about telling Luffy some stuff about, like, well, there's these really strong warriors. Like, they met Mihawk at the Baratier. Zeph might have known, like, okay, one of the reasons why Mihawk is so damn powerful is he has that sword, but he also knows armor armament hockey but he thought about it like maybe i should tell luffy but he's like you know what i'm not gonna tell him he wants to do this on his own and have his own adventure and his own journey he'll certainly find out about hockey at some point uh, during his journey if he doesn't die first so i'll just leave it to him right so i guess that kind of makes sense although at the same time you think zeph would have cared about sanji enough to be like hey you know just be careful anyway uh that was that was zeph how about arlong Arlong was a member of the Sun Pirates, the original Sun Crew, with Jinbei and Fisher Tiger and Aladdin and all these really strong fishermen and merfolk. Um, and they were fighting against the Marines, like directly opposing the Marines on a regular basis. You'd think definitely that at least maybe Arlong wouldn't be able to use it, but a similar situation with Morgan. Like he wouldn't be able to use it himself, but he would know it exists. I should also bring up at this point, I thought it was a little weird it wasn't until Luffy ran into the Kuja, specifically Margaret, that actually explained what hockey was to him, right? It's like, you know, all the people that Luffy met on his journey until then, and nobody that was friendly with him actually explained hockey. Now, with the exception of Crocus and maybe Zeph, like, who else would have really explained it to Luffy? Like, they made friends with, like, the Alabasta Kingdom, but that's more of a kingdom. I don't think they would necessarily know about hockey. Nobody in, like, like Usopp's village in the East Blue would have known about hockey. Um, they got to Water 7, they were friends with the Galley La and everything, but I don't don't think they would have known about it um you know it really wasn't until they reached amazon lily or luffy himself reached amazon lily that's like okay this is a warrior tribe of women the kuja that fight every day and they of course awakened hockey and they're friendly to explain well not at first but eventually they were friendly with luffy to actually explain you know this is hockey this is how it works at least to a limited extent what they knew about it right like in infusing the arrows with it and everything yeah they ran into villains that could use it like enaru could use mantra but once again enaru's not going to explain this to the straw hats it wasn't really until the kuja that where it made sense like okay you know these aren't some random people living out in the east uh, these aren't a bunch of cooks at the baratier or a bunch of carpenters at water seven these are warriors that live in 
in the calm belt, yeah, they would know how to use hockey, and they'll explain it to Luffy, right? So there's that. Um, after Arlong uh, Park, we have uh, Logtown. Like I said, Smoker and Tashiki, they should have known about hockey. Although with the case with Smoker, he's a Logia user. So he's like, all right, I'm going to focus more on my Devil Fruit rather than learning hockey. And of course, he learns hockey later. But he, of course, would have known about it. He was a captain at that point, eventually a Commodore, and then a Vice Admiral, right? Now, we get to Crocus, who... Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. I guess you could say the same thing with Zeph. Like, Crocus, like, wanted the Straw Hats to have their own adventure, so he didn't want to give them too much information. But then again, that kind of contradicts what Crocus said, because one of the things he did tell them was, like, you know, Nami takes out the compass, like, the regular, like, cardinal direction compass, like, in our world, to try to navigate their course, and it's spinning, and she's like, I don't understand how to navigate this sea, and Crocus is like, do you not know how to use a log pose? Like, what's that? I'm like, oh my god, did you kids come here to die? Like, that was, I think, a line, like, directly what Crocus said. Like, did you all come here to die? Like, you don't even know how to navigate the basics of the Grand Line? Like, oh my god, hold on, all right. So he's like, all right, this thing is called the log pose. This is how you use it. It's magnetically charged. So he wasn't against helping out the Straw Hats, at least with the basics, right? I feel like hockey kind of constitutes the basics, you know what I mean? Like, this is a whole aspect of power that, you know, they didn't know about. And so unless you go ahead with the, um, you know, Oda didn't just think that far ahead. Unless you go with that kind of meta explanation, if you're trying to come up with a real explanation in story why Crocus did not tell them that hockey even existed, you really can't come up with anything other than... Crocus just felt like they'll, uh, they're, they're strong enough, I guess. They'll probably figure it out on their own. <laughs> you know, like, which is kind of a jerk move. I mean, it kind of is. He, he didn't even have to, like, he could have at least alluded to it. He could have said, like, you know, Luffy, um, you're made of rubber, but don't think just because you're made of rubber that, you know, you're invincible. Like, there are people out there in the world that can harm Devil Fruit users. And he's like, oh, yeah, I met this guy named Smoker that has, like, he could turn into smoke. And he's like, oh, yeah, he must have been a Logia. I'm not even talking about them, though. I'm talking about, like, there's other humans that might not even have Devil Fruit powers. They're still able to injure Devil Fruit users. Or that would be a thing. What if Luffy mentioned Smoker? Like, I fought against this smoke guy at Logtown, and I couldn't hit him. And Crocus tells him... That's called a Logia. He's not invincible. There are ways to hurt him. I won't tell you what they are, but they do exist. It's up to you to find them out on your own, but don't think he's invincible. He, there is a way to fight Logias. That would have been cool if Crocus would have said something with that, right? But once again, Oda probably didn't think that far ahead. So with Crocus, that's one of the probably the first ones on this list. I'm like, all right, that's kind of a little strange. Um, after Crocus, we have Dory and Broggy. Now, this is an interesting one. Have we seen giants utilize hockey? Hyrudine, I don't think he used it, but I feel like he probably did. Like, I don't remember a scene with Hyrudine using hockey at the Coliseum or fighting against Mach Vice. Um, he was using, like, you know, gun gear! He was using all of, like, the Elbaf techniques, but he might have used hockey. I feel like, I feel like Hyrudine should be capable of using it, right? Um, Dorian Bragi were warriors of Elbaf. There might be some kind of thing in Elbaf, though, that maybe instead of hockey, it's more about, like, just your physical strength. You know, like, that's more of, like, what you're considering. Because they have, like, the warrior culture, right? And it's so it's, like, it's not about devil fruits. It's not about fancy tricks like armament or conquerors. No, it's just about pure buff. You know, that's what the warrior culture of Elbaf is all about. I only bring up Dory and Bragi because they were over 100 years old and they were from this culture all about warriors. I feel like you know, they would know about hockey and they were friendly with the Straw Hats. Maybe they could have told them about them. But then again, the Straw Hats did not stay on Logtown, not Logtown, Little Garden very long because they had to get moving because the log was like, oh, okay, we have to get Vivi to Alabasta and we have to get off this island as quick as possible. So they didn't really have time to sit and chat with them for a long time about everything they knew. And of course, Dory and Broggy, they were like, you know, we have to get back to fighting now, you know, all that kind of crap. Um, but they might very well know about it because they came from Elbaf, which is like fighter warrior culture. Um, here's one, Dr. Kareha. I bring her up only because she's once again, she's 141 years old. By the way, holy crap, was Dr. Kareha older than Dory and Bragi? How old were Dory and Bragi? They were brawling on Little Garden for about 100 years. 
Um, but they were obviously pirates before that in like their younger days when they were in their young 60s, I guess. Um, I think Dorian Bragi are older than her. I think Dorian Bragi were like 160, 170 right now. Uh, maybe a little bit older than that because giants live to be about 300. They might be about like 200 years old, maybe. I don't know. I haven't looked it up in a while. But the point is I'm trying to make is Dr. Kareha is also really, really old. Let her, you know, hear you say that, but she's really old, and uh, she's a doctor as well, one of the, if not the best doctor in the entire world, so, you know, you think at some point she would have discovered, like, this secret willpower thing that all humans possessed, all living things possessed, really, to, like, sense other people, like, sixth sense and, like, armament and everything like that, you think at some point maybe she would have discovered that, just because she's a doctor and she has lived that long and probably seen a lot of patients along the way, and we still don't know a lot about her past and what she did, you know, we know she was on Drum Island, but... Was she just on drum for, like, all 140 years of her life? Well, I'm sure, I imagine she traveled at one point, and maybe she saw a lot of crazy things in the world. And she knew that Roger was not Gold Roger, he was Gold D Roger. So, you know, that's not information that everybody in the world just knows, you know, because the government tried to cover it up and everything. So, I'm thinking Kareha probably knew it about it as well. Um, now we get to Alabasta, where we have Crocodile. And I, I made the short about it, but let me just, like, expand upon that a little bit. The basic idea is that Crocodile knew about the existence of hockey. Like, I just can't get around that. Like, he had to have known what armament and what, um, you know, observation was at least, okay? Now, what I think happened, though, remember Crocodile fought against Whitebeard when he was in his 20s, okay? Crocodile was there at Roger's execution. He was inspired to go out to sea just like everybody else was, and so he did that. And I like to think that Crocodile ate his Logia, the Suna Suna Nomi. By the way, we actually got to see that recently in the, um, in the magazine, and uh, it's just a cactus. So that means Crocodile Crocodile just ate a damn cactus at one point. I don't know if he was, like, maybe all there, but he's like, he sees a cactus, and he's like, I hope this is a devil fruit. Oh, God. You know, I've touched a cactus before. Not fun. Eating one? Probably less fun. But anyway, that's what you need to go through if you want to have the power of a Logia, damn it. That would actually be interesting if, like, that is a drawback. Like, in order to get the power of the Mara Mara no Mi, the Mara Mara no Mi is, like, super hot. And if you eat it, it, it'll feel like you're being burned from the inside, but then you get the power. And with the sand sand fruit, you literally have to eat a cactus, but after you do, you become a sand man. Like, that would be cool. But anyway, no. So I think he got his devil fruit relatively early on in his journey. And it's a Logia. And it's a pretty damn good Logia. So he just wiped the floor with pretty much any opposition he had throughout most of Paradise. And he's like, I'm awesome. You know, I can use this power of a Logia to become king of the pirates. And then he went into the new world and he found Whitebeard. And he's like, Whitebeard's one of the Yonko. I'm going to use my power, my Logia to defeat him. And then he fought him. And then Whitebeard beat the ever loving shit out of him and probably ripped his arm off. Okay, not his arm, but his hand. That's probably how Crocodile lost a hand, okay? You know, he's like, I'm going to use my sand powers to beat him. Bam! Crocodile probably got one shot. Whitebeard probably didn't even look in his general direction. He's just like, huh? Whatever. Bam! And just knocked him back. And, you know, Crocodile really felt the, the shock waves from that, quite literally, okay? And so, maybe maybe Whitebeard had a line of dialogue, you know, come back in 2,000 years when you actually know hockey and maybe we can fight again. And then they just sailed away. Crocodile's like, what, what, what just happened? And what was that, right? And so he might have probably learned about it at that point, but instead of focusing on hockey, I think what Crocodile did instead was, screw that. I'm going to focus on my Devil Fruit, and I'm going to max out that Devil Fruit stat, and I'm going to be a strong warrior just with that, okay? And so sort of maybe like out of spite, like, oh, he thinks he's so strong because he knows this hockey. Well, I'm going to train with my Devil Fruit and get even stronger than his hockey. Mm, kind of seems like something Crocodile would do. And Crocodile had access to all those really, like, you know, the, 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 the crescent that, like, dehydrates people. I like to think those abilities he had were not there as soon as he ate the fruit. Like, he was instantly able to, like, dehydrate and suck the moisture out of a large battlefield or whatever. He learned that over the decades with his fruit. I think Crocodile's, like, in his mid-40s right now, right? So let's say he ate the fruit in his mid-20s. He's had it for, like, 20 years. He trained the ever-loving crap out of that. That's the reason he can, you know, drain the moisture out of, like, an entire area, turn everything into sand, use the dehydration blades, you know, La Spada and Girasol and all that stuff. That was from years and years and years of focusing just on his devil fruit and not really so much on other things. I also like to think because Crocodile reflexively turned his body into sand, that's how he trained it, maybe there was a little bit of observation there, he just didn't know about it, okay? Um, or he did it subconsciously, right? And why he didn't use hockey against Luffy, I mean, maybe he just felt like, okay, because he thought Luffy was playing around with his devil 
devil fruit. He thought he's just like, oh, you're a rubber kid. You're making a bunch of like, like child's games, basically like gum gum pistol and baku baku. It was like, this is goofy. This is silly. I have trained with my devil fruit for 20 years. I'm an adult. I know how to use all these really cool abilities and you're just playing around. Right. And so I think like crocodile being very arrogant that he is, he's just like, I'm going to show this kid how much stronger, you know, my devil fruit is than his. Right. And so that's how he wanted to defeat him. Not so much relying on hockey, rather relying on devil fruit versus devil fruit. Like mine is, is better than yours, so to speak. Right. Also, Luffy got really lucky by discovering Crocodile's weakness, which is a pretty glaring weakness to a weakness to water, even more of a weakness than most Devil Fruit users have to water. He's like quad weak to water in like Pokemon terms, right? That's Crocodile, right? So Luffy got really lucky there. Crocodile was very arrogant, but I just have to believe like, yes, he was defeated by Whitebeard for God's sake. He had to have known what hockey was. It's just he never really took training in it super seriously until maybe after he was defeated by Luffy. And he's like, all right, there is a way for me to get strong. Stronger. I kind of maxed out my devil fruit. Now maybe I'm going to focus on hockey a bit. That's the best way for me to say that there. Um, we get to Skypea. Obviously, Enaru knew it, uh, but they called it Mantra. And that was really one of the first times that Luffy was fighting against an opponent that was consciously using hockey against him, okay? And so dodging all of the attacks. And so, you know, Luffy kind of understood that they're using some kind of weird psychic ability, but they didn't. he didn't know, like, he could learn it too, or there's, like, other things involved. Uh, but later on, when he trains with Rayleigh, Rayleigh does explain to him, like, yeah, you know, this is Mantra, it's observation, that's what the people in the sky call it, right? So, yeah, that was that. Um, and now we get there, there's two more here uh before we get to the actual proper introduction like there was a point in the story i think it was probably right around right around alabasta skypea that's when oda decided hockey's going to be part of this story it's you know, observation armament and conquerors that's probably when he sat down and actually made the three categories because eventually shanks shows up on whitebeard's ship and he's using it and i think they even call it hockey at that point so like probably around alabasta skypea that's when oda decided this was going to be a thing okay um but probably the biggest one that probably everybody's going to bring up um cp9 it really doesn't make any sense why CP9 did not use hockey during Eni's Lobby. And I've tried to kind of explain this away by saying, it's like, well, let's look at it this way. They were trained since they were little kids. They were basically orphans to be, you know, soldiers for the government, to be spies, to be assassins. And so they were taught Roku Shiki. So maybe it's like the government was more interested in teaching them these physical abilities like Shigan, Tekai, you know, Rankyaku, all that kind of stuff. Roku Ogun, you know, before they taught them hockey. Okay, you know what? I can buy that. I can buy that, that like they started teaching them Roku Shiki first. But Luchi and Jabra and Kaku, I mean, like... By the time we meet them in the story and they fight against the Straw Hats, they're like adults. They're well into their 20s. Jabra, I think, is like in his 30s. All right, like, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It, it really doesn't. Like, it would make sense, like, when they were kids to teach Rokushiki, but after they kind of learned all the basics of the Rokushiki techniques when they got a little older, you know, maybe when they're, like, teenagers or, like, around the age that, like, Luffy was when he learned hockey, Luffy was 17, is, like, maybe at that point, like, all right, now we taught you Rokushiki, now we're going to teach you hockey. You know, it's like, oh, man, I wonder if the ability to sense life forms around you at a distance would be useful for an assassin organization. Like, of course it would, all right? Of course, observation hockey at least, all right? So, you know, like uh, Kaku was 23. I think Luchi was in his late 20s. Jabra was in his 30s. And we're supposed to be led to believe that they did not learn hockey until the two-year time skip which is silly, um, you know, or it's like when they joined CP0, CP0 taught them hockey. It's like bullshit. There are regular Marines, like Marine officers that can use hockey. Like all the vice admirals, it was revealed, all the vice admirals know hockey, at least observation and armament, all right? That was a fact that was revealed by Kobe, actually, right? So it's like you're telling me these, all these vice admirals know it. I mean, other ranks probably know it as well. It's just, it's like, it's, it's implied like to be a vice admiral, you have to know how to use hockey. Like that is a prerequisite, but like rear admirals, captains, commanders, commodores, they might know about it as well. You're telling me these guys know it, 
but they're not going to teach their top assassins. The CP9, their top assassins, the ones they entrust, like, the most important jobs to, they're not going to teach them hockey until, like, it's like, well, all right, uh, Jabra, you're, like, 38 years old. All right, I think you're ready to learn about hockey. I think Jabra is, like, the same age uh, that Who's Who is, right? So, yeah, I mean, like, you could say it's like, well, they're going to focus on physical abilities first and then hockey later, but even then, that doesn't make any sense. Like, if the CP9 agents were roughly the same age as the Straw Hats when they fought, like, if, you know, Luffy was fighting Luchi and Lu Luchi was, like, 17, like, the same age as Luffy, and he only knew Roku Rokushiki, I'm like, okay, I could buy that, but, you know, he didn't. So, that's that's one that I really can't explain away. It's, it's really difficult to explain away. If you want to go for it, have fun. Um, I also wrote down here at this point post any's lobby when kobe and helmeppo show up they probably at least learned a little bit about hockey from garp like at least what it is and kobe and luffy are really, really good friends so kobe could have been like hey luffy have you heard about this thing called hockey and he's like oh, no i haven't it's like oh it's really cool you should learn how to use it i really haven't mastered it myself but it's really cool right maybe something like that i don't know and then finally the last character i wanted to discuss here before we really got to sab Odi arc where it was expanded and your know, shows up and introduces the concept and then marine ford and everything um mori at Thriller Bark. Why didn't Moria, as another warlord, utilize hockey? This is way easier to explain than Crocodile, because Crocodile had, like, ambition, and he was clearly very powerful. Moria was a lazy bastard. <laughs> Moria was like the sloth of the seven deadly sins of the seven warlords of the sea, kind of. Remember that? Remember back when there was a theory that like, oh, each one of the warlords correspond to one of the seven deadly sins. That's what Oda's going for here. And I mean, like, kind of. Like, you could. Like, you know, Doflamingo could represent wrath. You know, Moria can represent sloth. Obviously, Boa represents lust. I mean, that's like, you know, one-to-one -one right there. Like, like, literally her powers are involved in that. Um, Crocodile could represent greed, uh, maybe even envy, because he was, like, envious of, like, Whitebeard's abilities. Uh, Mihawk, you know, who, what would Mihawk represent, though? Um, uh, gluttony? Like, I mean, I guess gluttony could be in the sense of, like, now we're going off on a tangent about this, but no, like, gluttony doesn't have to be, like, I eat a lot of Twinkies! No, gluttony can just be, like, I desire everything, or I desire to have all of one resource, or to be the top of something, or to have everything, all of the fame, all of that. Um, and Mihawk is, you know, the, the best swordsman in the world, so maybe you could do that. Uh, oh, screw it, we're on this topic, why not? All right, so we're going Soul Eater rules here when they went into the Book of Avon, so that's the order of the seven deadly sins that I know. So Lust is Hancock, Gluttony is maybe Mihawk, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, Envy is maybe Crocodile. Wrath is Doflamingo. I'm pretty confident putting Doflamingo as Wrath, okay? You fair with that, okay? Um, let's see, and then five was, um, uh, what was five in the Book of Avon? Greed was last. Sloth was six. What was the fifth one? I'm forgetting a sin here. I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on one here. Give me a second. Pride. I got it. Pride. Mihawk is pride. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Everybody in the chat is probably already typing it. Like, oh my god, teching. Mihawk is not gluttony. Mihawk is pride. Come on. He's the best swordsman in the world. Pride. I'm like, okay. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I blanked. Okay. I didn't know I was making a seven deadly sins warlord video today. All right. All right. We're almost done. Oh, that was the end of the video. Anyway, Mori is slothful. That's why he doesn't have hockey. That's the reason. But no. Okay. All right. All right. So, okay. Boa Hancock is Lust, Mihawk is Pride, Crocodile might be Envy, Doflamingo is Wrath, um, so uh, Sloth would be Moria, and then uh, uh, Greed would be, um, how about we do this, how about we do Crocodile for Greed, because he wanted to like rule the country and also like, I mean, not like a mass money in the typical sense, but he did want to become King of the Pirates, so you could say that, so Crocodile was Greed, and then I guess Kuma was Envy. Um, I, I guess, I mean, it makes more sense than any other sin for Kuma, really. We don't really know much about Kuma's, like, backstory, like, why he wanted to become a cyborg, or why he gave himself over to the government and his connection to the revolutionaries. There's still a lot of this we don't know, but Envy could be involved somewhere with Kuma. It makes more sense than giving him, uh, like, greed or anything like that, because that doesn't seem like Kuma's personality. All right, so there we go. There's my, uh, dual video on characters that should have used hockey before they 
really knew it existed, and also characters, uh, the warlords that are seven deadly sins. So there you go. That was a little bonus. That counts as bat facts for today. I went off on a whole other tangent there at the end. This is already a long video. Um, but anyway, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this. This was a fun one. Thanks for watching, everybody. And, uh, you know, don't take it too seriously, like I said. You know, I'm not, this is not like a slight against Oda or anything. Like, how dare Oda not know exactly what he was going to do in chapter 1025 back in chapter 17? I ask you. Nothing like that. I just thought it would be funny to bring it up. All right. Have a good one, everybody. This will be Teching. This will be Barry signing out. Happy autumn, everyone.